The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. I posted the chart of uh, silver and gold again. Uh, going back a couple of months, uh, we are now breaking. We've touched uh, below the 61% uh, retracement on the daily silver chart. Uh, we're trading below there right now. Um, that's usually not a very good sign, especially since it had a three-day rally uh, that didn't actually go, go anywhere. Now, gold is actually holding up pretty good. But that's still neither here nor there. I know this is not the commodity show, but this happens to be something that I think is important looking at gold and silver. Gold had a pretty good rally today and so far has pulled back to a 61% uh, retracement. So uh, that's it. I'm going to talk just a brief time here about the commodity report here for tomorrow because uh, we had the crop report yesterday. And, folks, we have a 14 billion bushel corn crop. I mean, <laughs> I can't even fathom how how they're going to handle this. I, I really don't. Uh, that, that's a lot of corn. Uh, yet corn had a pretty good rally off the bottom. I'm sure it was short covering, but uh, it did, did rally about 15 or 20 cents, and beans uh, were still getting hit hard. We're going to have a very large crop of beans. We need these crops because, uh, you know, the the earth the, the world has to be fed, and we're the breadbasket of the world, so... That's what we're looking at here in uh, in the grains. We'll see what happens, uh, you know, t tomorrow when we do the grain report and get a little bit more uh, you know, interesting in, in some of the things that uh, we happen to be watching. Now, uh, one of the charts that I follow all the time with the stock market, uh, we talked about it uh, on Monday show, and that is the VIX index and the possibility of it pulling back to a 61% retracement. And as we are speaking right now, we just hit it uh, at 13.05. So we're going to see if this is going to be some type of a bounce in the stock market uh, to the downside or not. You know, we'll see what uh, we'll see whatever whatever transpires. But it's actually hit the exact 61% retracement from the low we made back in July. We rallied up to the 1755 level, and now we pull back to exactly the 61% the, the retracement, at least so far today. And we're up, you know, quite strong in the market. We sold off a tiny bit, not very much, but, uh, you know, that's pretty much, you know, what we're, uh, you know, what we're looking at. And we'll, we'll go, from, uh, go from there with the rest of the analysis. Now, we've uh, also mentioned the fact of the importance of this bottom that we've had in the stock market because of the fact that we stopped exactly at the 61% retracement in the New York Stock Exchange Index. And it was also a 382 retracement of that uh, level that we made, you know, way back in February. Uh, and now we're in the midst of a five-day rally, one, two, three, four, five. This is the five-day rally, and we're setting exactly at the 382 retracement. Boys and girls, let me tell you a little bedtime story here. If we go below that low we made back on August the 4th, it ain't going to be a bedtime story. It's going to be a nightmare, and you're going to be up all night if you're long because this is going to be one, one hell of a sell-off if it does that. I know the odds against it are about 10 to 1, but if it happens to be that 10th time, just be careful and don't hold any positions below that August uh, 4th uh, low if you get it. That would be equivalent of that uh, VIX index uh, going back above 17 again. So <clears throat> I think that would be something to, you know, just keep in mind that if it happens, you know, look at it. Because we've had a five-day rally. We're setting right at the 382 retracement from the high we made on July the 3rd. And uh, it still looks good. Nothing looks bad. I mean, you know, you can stay long as long as you want. But uh, as long as you want, as, lo as long as it doesn't go below August the f uh, 4th, then you will be uh, then you then you would be in trouble. But right now it looks okay. Uh, it's right at a critical point. I've heard I heard uh, Basil's show and a little bit of Steve, and it uh, it is at a critical point. There's no question about it because we've had a five day rally, and that's what you usually get when you uh, when you have these markets. The same way on the upside, and same way on the downside. 
So, you know, that's the, that's the key thing to look at. Now, I wanted to go back to that. Uh, I don't know. The, oh, dear. I'm having a, uh, a senior moment here because I can't remember whether I, whether I showed the uh, – yes, I think I did. I showed the uh, – I'm going to do it again just because I, uh, I like this chart anyway. And I think it's important because charts give us a little bit of an idea of where we are uh, when we're trading. At least they do from pattern recognition points. But uh, this daily uh, silver chart is really important because we hit the 61% retracement back on August the 4th. And then we rallied three days. And then we've been down four days. Uh, we, we topped here uh, on the uh, 8th of August. And now we are uh, heading down. We took out the lows. Now this might just be a test. We could take in that, you know, taking that low out by just a little bit, and it could turn and have a, you know, make a major bottom from here. This could just be a double test of this six one eight. So that's why it's so, uh, you know, so very important where we are now. But if we if we close below the uh, the low of the day, which is right around uh, nineteen seventy, which has always been our key key level here uh, in the silver, that will tell us that we're most probably you know, getting ready to uh, to head uh, a, a lot lower. We'll see if that's going to if that's going to be the case, uh, you know, or not. We'll have to wait and see. Um, the rest of the world, uh, you know, seems to be reacting to uh, some of the news about some of the casinos. Uh, uh, two major casinos in uh, Atlantic City, the New Ravel and the uh, Showboat, are closing down, uh, losing 6,000 jobs. Uh, folks, I haven't seen anything like that happen since uh, the 70s when uh, the Vegas casinos were, were closing down because of the unions and stuff like that. So this could be, uh, could be very important. The fact that... Uh, the gambling income is, uh, you know, way under what they expected it to be. Could be a sign of a softening of the economy, uh, of the economy or not. This I leave this to the fundamentalist. Uh, all I'm looking at is the charts, and uh, this is uh, this is primarily what I'm, uh, you know, keeping my uh, keeping my eye on. We'll we'll have to uh, see what's going to happen. Um, I heard it. I have to share this with you. We've got a few minutes here that I wanted to share this with you. I happened to be watching um, the. I think it was the BBC Channel uh, last night. Um, they had something on that I wanted to watch, and then they had a, a commentator on. He was uh, he was somebody from uh, the UK, and they were talking about uh, uh, sanctions and stuff. And he said the sanctions that they're doing with Russia, he said, are absolutely worthless. He said, well, he's not worthless, he says, but they're very inept. He said they just don't do the job that they need to do. He said what they need to do is they need to take and uh, pick a, uh, a commodity that uh, is very important to Russia, i.e. crude oil, primarily uh, uh, Brent North Sea crude, and get that price down below fifty dollars a barrel. In other words, get it to drop about fifty percent from where it is right now. He said that will basically put uh, Russia and Putin out of business because they won't have any money. They'll be in a depression because they get all of their income or seventy percent of it from this particular thing. Well, you know the, the other the other announcer says, well, that could never happen. And I'm saying, oh boy, uh, go back to two thousand eight and you think it could never happen when you stop and think that there are really six major firms that control the oil market. They do most of the trading in the oil. Uh, that is a, a real scary fact, and that would be the way that they could very easily take care of this problem that we're having with Russia is to push the price of oil, you know, way down to where – you know, they just literally, you know, don't have any income coming in, and that's what his uh, his opinion was. So how do we make any money off of this? Well, we keep an eye on crude oil because if crude oil goes below 96, we're trading at 96.97 right now, that would be a sign that, yes, there's a possibility that this is going to be the case, and we're going to see, you know, much lower you know, prices uh, in the crude oil. So the reason why that's important is because that 96 level, and we'll put this up and let everybody take a look at it here because that's such a, it's such an important Fibonacci point. Uh, we've been there, uh, well, we've been here for well over a week now, and uh, it hasn't even, uh, it hasn't rallied much. That doesn't mean that it's not going to, but uh, it's at the point where it has a, what we call the moment of truth. And so this is going to be very, very interesting 
to see uh, to see if it's going to uh, you know take a look at it. Um, I wanted to mention about the uh, the U.S. dollar index. Uh, the euro has uh, had a pretty good rally last night. Uh, we got up to the seven eight six retracement of the previous uh, two days high. Uh, up at the uh, 134 level, and then it's backed off again, and it's heading back down to the 786 of that range. But the one that's been the weakest uh, has been the British pound because it broke below the key level at uh, you know 167, and uh, it has a, uh, a very very interesting pattern. In fact, we've been we've been following that today uh, from the short side, and I wanted to put it up to just to show you you know where we are because this is going to be a key level in the British pound. Uh, if we get to this spot, because we've had so many, uh, just give me one second here to, uh, I have to draw in the pattern, otherwise you will not be able to uh, get the full benefit of it, uh, or <laughs> whatever, we'll see what happens here. But uh, there there it is, we've got a, a really nice potential three drive pattern, we've had a big outside day uh, down today. Uh, we went below the 61% retracement by quite a bit, and it looks like we're going to go down another 70 pips uh, in the British pound to uh, to see you know what we're going to be. And now, if that happens and the euro stays above the 133, we're still going to be very very close to that uh, number in the dollar index because the dollar index key number is 8180 uh, and we've been there twice and today we're only at 8169 so there's other currencies i.e. the Japanese yen and Australian dollar that are holding you know the dollar uh, in place here so uh, this is a real the two that I follow the most are, cor are the pound and the euro and uh, those are the ones that we're, we're watching but we had a lot of action today uh, because of news in uh, Great Britain the market rallied up to the 61% retracement of last week's high, and then, boy, it just uh, it fell out of bed so fast that it was just uh, you could hardly even uh, put an order in. It was going down so fast. If you weren't already short, you were uh, you were in big trouble. So uh, that's what that's what we're looking at. We're looking for the 786 on this uh, British pound to come in around the the 16610. We're at 16694 now, so that's basically what we're looking at from uh, from that point of view. So that's uh, really what we're watching here. The three major ones. I know I've, I covered a lot of forex and commodities. Uh, if you have any questions on stocks, I'll be happy to. To answer them for you, uh, I don't, uh, as you know, I really don't follow fundamentals at all. The fact that I even listened to those people from the BBC today uh, really surprised me. But it was an interesting way because he had some charts up there that showed that if the price of crude gets under a certain price, that the money just dries up and they can't, uh, you know, they just can't function. They can't pay the soldiers or anybody else. Okay, got a Dow still strong. Uh, gold is up a tiny bit. And we got crude oil down just a little. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. 
For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, I've been asked to take a uh, look at Tesla. I uh, had a lot of negative news yesterday from consumer reports saying that the car had a lot of problems. Uh, that's like saying that uh, that there's not a lot of water in Lake Mead anymore because uh, every car has problems. I mean, General Motors recalled 12 million cars, and yet their sales are still going crazy. Anyway, back to Tesla. We talked about the potential of a double top in Tesla up at the 265 level. Well, we made the 265 level the first time, you know, way back in February. Since that time, the market backed off about 20%, coming down to 180. And today's high was 66 cents higher than it was on February the 4th, 265.66. So we did make a higher high. That does complete a double top. Uh, if you are... Uh, uh, wanting to trade a double top like this, there's two ways to do it. Yeah, first of all, a $265 stock is not a cheap stock, and so if you are selling it short, that means you have to have a substantial account in order to uh, sell the stock short. But the question that I have is, if it was uh, really good, why didn't it go smashing above uh, 265 You know, once it made a new high? You would think that there would have been a lot of buy stops there, and uh, to see the market, uh, you know, go a lot higher, maybe up to 270, 275, because it's been very strong today. What I would do as a trader, uh, there are two ways to handle this. One is you could literally flat out sell the stock r roughly where it is right now, 262 and a half, and risk about four dollars, which is uh, you know less than uh, see one percent on that stock would be uh, two dollars. So you know you'd be risking about two percent, which is very very small. The second thing and the second way to handle it, which I think is the better way, because I think we have a 
chance to roll over here due to the VIX uh, here in the next couple of days after this five-day rally is to buy a put on uh, Tesla, uh, probably uh, a September put uh, that's around 240 And since that's uh, $22 out of the money, that put would probably not cost very much. And that would be the best way to look at it because if the market does correct, it's going to correct down to the 220 level, which would be a two-to-one uh, relationship from where we are now. Now, I don't know a whole lot about puts and calls. That, that's the understatement of the year. I know virtually nothing about puts and calls. I know a little bit about those uh, fraternity things, the alpha, delta, beta, stuff like that. But uh, I really don't uh, trade options very, very much at all, maybe once or twice a year. Uh, but this is the type of place where you would want to be looking at it uh, or even putting on a, uh, you know, uh, where you sell the call and, uh, you know, buy the put and, you know, look at it that way, too, because that way you can put a, uh, a straddle on, I guess is what they call it, to, to keep your risk, uh, you know, relatively small. But the, all I'm pointing out here is the market broke above the February high, which was 265. The high was 265.66. I happened to be watching it at that time because my alert went off. And believe me, folks, the number of trades that happened between 265 and 265.66, you could count on one hand. I mean, it was bada bing, bada boom, and it was over. And it was it was back down below 264 very, very quickly. So whether that means anything or not, but that's just me reading the tape, looking at a double top pattern. And, uh, you know, I, I like double tops. They're, uh, they work very well, especially with this one, because you have a three drive pattern coming into it where you have several ABCD patterns measuring up to this 265 level also. So that adds more uh, credence to the pattern if in fact this is uh this is going to be uh going to be the case but we'll have to just wait and see if this is going to happen or not uh, time will tell us over the next uh few days or weeks uh what's what's really going to happen and then we'll we'll go from uh we'll go from that level and we'll see where we are okay now the next chart someone asked me to ask about was the uh chart of amazon because we did cover that uh, the other day, and uh, you'll see that we've had a big gap up today in Amazon. We've had uh, it came off of the 786. Uh, this is such a beautiful chart, folks. If you ever believe in technical analysis, uh, this chart probably proves technical analysis more than any chart you'll ever see because you can see the major swings are all at 618 or 786 uh, on the upside and the downside. And you have the big ABCD that gave the top up at the 410 level. And then you had another move down that uh, took you down to 287 and then back up to 366 and then down to the 786. And we still got the Dow running and we'll be back in just a few moments after we face the bill. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we were talking about the uh, stock of uh, Amazon, uh, how technically beautiful it was. Uh, we gapped up uh, quite a bit today, and uh, it looks like we're going up another 5 to $6 to make the 61% retracement uh, up into that area. So that's what, uh, you know, really what, uh, what we're looking at here with the, uh, with Amazon. Uh, someone has posed a question uh, during the break here about Elliott Wave uh, analysis. Uh, I was looking at Elliott Wave analysis way back in 1970. Uh, that was about seven years before Prechter came out with his uh, Elliott Wave theorist. Uh, John Hill, who was my one of my mentors from Future's Truth, uh, showed me uh, you know the things about Elliott Wave that I thought were were relatively important. And uh, the problem was is that I could never. Uh, understand the counting of the waves, uh, you know, the one, two, three, four, fives. I couldn't understand that. I could understand the ABCD part, but I could not understand the, the actual counting of the waves. And frankly, uh, in all my years of, uh, you know, meeting traders and trading with other people and stuff, I've only found two or three uh, what I call a really good Elliott technicians that can see the market uh, the way that it is. The problem that I found was is that uh, every time you, you get two or three Elliott Wave people uh, in a room, uh, they all have nine different answers because each of them have alternative waves. And with pattern recognition, you really don't have that. You, you have a lot of losses because, you know, they don't work, but you're, you're not worried about, you know, trying to, uh, you know, understand why it didn't work. You just know that it didn't work and you go on to the next trade. That's basically what I did. I got so 
so confused of looking at the one, two, three fives and sub fives and all of those. And I, I know they have some, uh, you know, uh, usefulness, but uh, it's not what I do. I, I basically look at the market as simple as possible, and that's the, you know, the A, B, C, D. Uh, if the market has higher bottoms, it's in an uptrend. If it has lower tops, it's in a downtrend, and that's you know basically what I'm looking at. So there's not much more to look at other than that. So uh, I want to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, you know, with that, I, you know, Elliot when he wrote his paper back in 1938, uh, he was promoted by a man named Charles Collins, and uh, Elliot talked about 618, and he talked about 0.382 at a 50 percent level, and uh, he talked about the 1.618 expansion, but he did not look at the square roots of the numbers of 1.27 and 0.786, and you really need that to describe what you know the market is actually doing. So uh, that's the way I look at it. Whether that my two cents worth is uh, worth anything or not, I don't know. But I keep it as simple as possible. Uh, you know, I'm looking for patterns that you all know: the three drive to the tops, and the butterflies, and the Gartleys, and the ABCDs, and the one three five patterns. Those are the ones that uh, you know really I look for. And when you see them, they give you a pretty good idea of uh, you know what you're looking at as far as trying to find uh, you know a good trading opportunity that's basically uh, that's basically it so uh, that's <laughs> someone made the comment it's like being an economist that's true because all economists have they have their own uh, way of uh, you know telling you what the market's doing or not I was really surprised uh, today uh, to see because I saw uh, two days ago uh, my wife Sarah who happens to be uh, traveling in Asia right now uh, was was uh, showing me the the fact that the casinos in Macau were really in uh, dire straits, that the, the, the traffic is way down and the gambling revenue is way off. Uh, you know, they had really good earnings the first part of the year, but these last three months it's really been very, very bad. Part of that is due to the crackdown in China on corruption. But uh, it's also due to the fact that uh, there's just not many people coming there anymore. So we're seeing it on Asia, and we're also seeing it in Las Vegas. Uh, you know, a couple of casinos there have, uh, you know, shut down, and now we got the ones in Atlantic City. Whether that means anything on a longer-term basis, you know, I don't really know, but uh, it's something that you might want to uh, to keep in mind uh, to see what's happening. We had the same type of thing happen with the real estate market years ago. Back in uh, 07, 08, we started to see, you know, little rumblings of uh, little things happening. And uh, whether that means anything, I don't know. All I know is, folks, we are going down in stocks. Repeat, we are going down. I don't know when it starts the second leg, but we are going down. We're in this rally here. When we take out that low of August the 4th, uh, we're going down, so it's just a matter of uh, uh, not if, it's when. Uh, well, there, I shouldn't have said that because maybe it'll go up forever. But as long as you stay above August 4th, you should be okay. That's the that's the bottom line. But going below August 4th, uh, that's very bad. And if we go below August 4th very, very quickly, like uh, today or tomorrow or the next day, uh, the, <laughs> that's that, that you don't want to happen. There's major problems in Europe. Uh, we can see that with the weakness uh, that we're seeing in the euro. The euro should be rallying, and it's not. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see if uh, it's going to turn everything around or not. But uh, it's still, you know, really, really early in the game with that. But the uh, the DAX index, the German stock market, and the UK stock market, the FTSE, uh, all of them look absolutely horrible. And uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, before they uh, run into some really, really stiff resistance. The DAX index, the German index, with even uh, the uh, BMWs whose sales were up 25%, which basically means that everybody in Germany bought two or three uh, BMWs, I believe, uh, the, the DAX went from 10,000 to, to under 9,000 in one month during the month of July. And uh, I have a lot of friends in Germany, and we were, you know, looking at the chart because it, at that time, the DAX was making a huge A B C D pattern, uh, much like we were seeing in uh, all the other, uh, you know, markets that we were looking at uh, th throughout the world, and uh, it really, it really broke down uh, quite a bit. I wanted to. Uh, 
I'll bring that chart up of the DAX because it trades uh, really closely to the uh, the S and P 500. And as you can see, uh, we did take out the March lows. We went below the 9,000 level down to uh, 88 change, and uh, now we're in the midst of uh, of a rally, and we're looking for a three to five day rally. Uh, in that also, but you can see this chart that uh, you've had lower tops, uh, you know, ever since June. Uh, the big one starting on July the third when we topped, and uh, each of those tops were lower. And as you can see, there were three to five day rallies, you know, all through that uh, down move, and that's uh, the kind of thing that you would be looking at. But this is a, a major breakdown. Uh, in one of the largest economies of the world, the fourth largest economy of the world, so I think it's it's very uh, it's very very important to uh, to keep in mind uh, that that's what's uh, that's what's going on, uh, you know, with that. Uh, someone asked me a question about copper. I really haven't followed copper uh, over the past uh, few weeks or so because. Uh, I'm so interested in in gold. I'm very. I've been very bullish gold. Uh, it's held exactly where it should have. Uh, yesterday's low at 1305 was a, a really uh, strong retracement, and then we had today's low uh, so far at the 1309 level was a perfect 61 percent retracement of the low from yesterday to the high we made, which happened to be a 786 up there at 1317, and so all that tells me that we are. Uh, still in a bullish move, a move in gold, and if we can get it above 1330, gold's got a real chance uh, to go. I know uh, the silver looks bad, but uh, silver could look really good today if uh, you know we took out those lows of last week, which was right at the 61% retracement. We took those lows out, folks, by about a penny and a half. That's in a contract that's worth. Uh, ninety thousand dollars. Let's see, eighty-five thousand dollars. It took it out by a dollar and a half. I mean, there was no selling down there at uh, at nineteen seventy. So uh, this is a this a, could be a really key spot here uh, in silver and gold for uh, you know a pretty big change. So that's uh, another thing that I would be watching as far as uh, you know if the market's going to hold that. Uh, hold that level in silver but if it goes below it and closes below it then that's going to be you know altogether different it's still very early because this only happened about an hour ago and there's no new buying coming in as of yet but if it does you could see some real fireworks in both gold and silver today when they start to uh if in fact they do start to move to the upside that's what you'd have to be uh be watching so is real critical times in a lot of different things. I know Basil talked about it in his show, the fact that the timing of these things was very, very critical, and I don't think there's any question about it. Uh, we hit some real key spots on August the 4th in our in our stock market. Uh, the, the VIX is really key today at the 13 level. Uh, so far, it's holding okay. Uh, so this is, the, this is the thing. Just be careful, folks, of the day where you're way up in the morning and then you start to go down because those are the days where you get the really big moves of three to 500 points. And we are going to see a 500-point down move in the Dow, minimum 500, probably closer to 800, sometime between now and October. And uh, what, it'll, what it'll be caused by is could be anything from uh, uh, bird flu to uh, Ebola to uh, Putin, uh, you know, firing up uh, – uh, missiles or whatever it could be, uh, there'll be some big moves like that because we're starting to see increased volatility. Uh, look at the look at the VIX index. You know, we we were just laying there around 12, 11 and a half, 12, 11 and a half, and then boom, up to 17, bang, down to 13. They, this is this is the stuff you dream about. I mean, this is the this is the kind of volatility that you really like to have. So uh, that's the best thing that I can say is that uh, we're going to have some really great moves here, and uh, they'll be uh, they'll be very very substantial. Uh, I've had a question about the the commodity show tomorrow. We won't have Rich on tomorrow because uh, he's really he's uh, well. In fact, he's out of the office, which he's not able to get to a landline. But uh, you know they're having some really big moves uh, in corn and beans, and we've got some tremendous bearish news uh, in corn and beans uh, and also in wheat but not so much as wheat but but corn and beans for sure and that tells us that if we are in that 
uh, zone here where the market doesn't go down with really, really bad crops uh, or really, you know, bad uh big crops coming in if markets don't go down on uh bad news folks they only got one way to go and that's up just like when they go up and they don't go up on good news remember a couple of uh, weeks ago we had fantastic uh gdp numbers and employment numbers and everybody in the united states had a job and they were getting their entitlement programs and uh you know all that stuff but uh the market didn't go up and then it came down, and it came down hard. So it's how the market reacts to these news is the way you want to look at it because the news follows a trend, and that's the key to what we uh, that what we try to look at when we're when we're doing this. So that's uh, how I see this with the fundamentals and stuff. But uh, we're at the real key level in all these things. We're going to take a quick look here uh, at the Bradley model. Uh, I've had another request of that. You can see we're having a. Uh, a nice little uh, five-day rally now here in the uh, uh, in the, in the Dow in the, uh, the in the Dow Jones, of course. And uh, remember that uh, we had a super full moon uh, on the tenth. Uh, that was a Sunday, and then we've had this rally here. Uh, we're in the fourth day of it right now because the mar the market actually bottomed on a Thursday. Uh, then we had Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So we're five days into a rally. Uh, we're right at the uh, 382 retracement of the high in the Dow Jones, just like we are in the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index. But, you know, it can still go a great deal higher. But if it if it does turn down from there, that's the thing that you want to be, be sort of careful about because that means that these rallies, uh, like we saw in the DAX, only last three to five days and then, boom, you know, down it goes. And believe me, that's not a... Uh, you don't want to be in those things when they break that much. They uh, they really can uh, they can really put a lot of pain in your uh, equity account, and not only that, but in your psychic too. And that's something else that you don't want to uh, to really have uh, focused against. This is similar to what we had uh, during 1974 that I remember very very vividly because I was so bullish then, and the market would come down for. Uh, uh, eight or ten days, and then it would make a beautiful ten or twelve day bottom, and it would rally three days, and then boom, down hard for seven to ten days. And I went through three three of those cycles, and on the third one, it was goodbye house, goodbye car, uh, goodbye wife. No, <laughs> none of those things happened, but goodbye equity did happen. I lost a lot of money during that drop, and uh, I'll never go through that uh, uh, type of thing again because when these cycle lows break, uh, that means they're just going to be pulled down uh, to the next one. Uh, but that was 74. I, I knew about Fibonacci, but I didn't know about risk control. I didn't know about money management. I didn't know that you don't add to losing positions no matter how good the, the price looks or how good the pattern looks. You just don't you just don't add uh, to losing positions. It's just not the right thing to do. So uh, keep that in mind that we go below those August lows. We're in, we're in trouble in River City. Okay, we got the Dow still screaming up and the gold still holding strong. We'll be back in a few minutes. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Okay, folks, I posted the chart for uh, the Dow Jones Transportation. As you can see, we're making a 50% retracement in the Dow Jones Transportation over this five-year five-day rally but the next one i wanted to show you is uh the importance of what i think where the real where the real problem lies in our uh economy and i'm going to show you the uh, the this is the 10-year note uh as you can see we're making an abcd pattern here up at the 126 level uh, we did get as high as 126 and a half uh, during that uh, little bit of a panic that we had a week ago Thursday. But the important thing here is the next chart that I want to show you uh, that goes back a lot longer in time so that you can see, you know, where we were uh, just a long time ago when we were making the butterfly uh, top in the, uh, in the market that these notes, uh, just give me one second here, uh, these notes are just incredibly bearish. Uh, even if we rally up to 128 or 127 on some type of a uh, flight to quality or something like that, uh, interest rates are going higher, folks. Uh, that's what this chart is telling us. We've had lower tops since June of 2012 when we made the butterfly top. That's when the bonds were up at the 154 level. And uh, these notes, of course, are the things that they give you your credit card rates and your mortgages and uh, credit cards and all this stuff uh, is all based on this, uh, personal loans. And so this this is a real critical thing to look 
at. But we are heading higher in interest rates. We might have one more spike up with a flight to quality of some kind or something, you know, really gets, uh, you know, pretty dramatic somewhere. But uh, right now it looks like we are getting ready to uh, roll over here uh, in the notes uh, on the downside uh, is the way it appears. Uh, here again, if you've got a chance to refinance your house, uh, your mortgage rates are still over 4% or so. Uh, it's a little harder to get mortgages than it used to be uh, because the banks are tired of paying these uh, 8 and $10 billion fines. <laughs> what I want to know, folks, is how bad were they if they pay these billion-dollar fines without even uh, – batting an eye boy they must have really done some really bad things i mean I, I don't think it's fair that they're allowed to pay these fines why can't we just take them to court and find out what happened i mean they're paying this money i mean if you're going to steal a hundred like milken milken made three billion dollars that he got a one billion dollar fine he had to pay a billion dollars in taxes and he still walked away with a billion dollars that was 88 you know you know how much money that was now i mean that'd be a lot of money at that time, it was a lot of money. So, uh, you know, it's not fair to us, but there's nothing we can do about it. And I'm going to get off my soapbox now and try to finish the show. Anyway, the real key here is the interest rate market. Uh, we're going to see some uh, pretty big things. The Spanish bonds are still selling at a, uh, a premium to the U.S. Treasury bonds. In other words, you could get a better yield on the uh, uh, the Spanish bond than you can on the uh uh, U.S. Treasury bonds, you can buy them cheaper than you can buy U.S. Treasury bonds, which doesn't uh, make a lot of sense to me. But, in fact, that's the way the market is, so you can't, uh, you can't uh, go against it. However, we got to watch it very, very closely because that's one of the signs that you want to keep in mind that uh, once this, these credit markets starts to crumble, and this is a credit bubble, that we're looking at that's the thing that we have to watch most and that will tell us where we are uh within this time frame of what we're looking at so we're in the f uh, the fifth day of a five-day rally so how much higher it's going to go here uh, is anybody's guess uh, still early in the day but uh, remember if we go below the august 4th low uh, which was 18 90 in the S&P, uh, that's not a good number. We're 40 points higher than that right now. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, my friends, and may God bless and do something nice for someone who has a lot less than you do. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.